Welcome to Laker Central. Subscribe to the channel and go on over to LakerCentral.com and subscribe to the newsletter at the bottom of the page. Subscribers are eligible for special giveaways. I recently gave away two copies of the Mamba Forever edition of 2K21. I also gave away a dad's hat. So shout out to all those Lakers fans out there. Subscribe to the newsletter. So in January, I created a video called The Media Gets Everything Wrong About the Lakers. It was a collection of videos and images from all the experts criticizing Rob Palenka and the Lakers for what they called mishandling the cap over the summertime. Many Lakers fans knew that it wasn't true, but the narrative started and things kind of went from there. And really, it's all about clicks. It's all about social media engagement. So I think that drove a lot of that conversation uh, when people were reporting that. But it just goes to show how these false narratives start uh, about the Lakers. In this video, I'm going to take a look back at the preseason rankings. And a lot of experts didn't think that a team with LeBron James and Anthony Davis could actually be this good. But it's really funny to look back and see these bad takes and really see how uh, a lot of these folks try to shift the view uh, of the Lakers. So what I wanted to do was start with the 800 pound gorilla in the room in sports and entertainment, ESPN. So um, ESPN experts, they're kind of the main ones that criticize everything the Lakers do. Everything from Kobe's extension a number of years ago to the hiring of Rob Palenka. They're front and center with criticizing the Lakers. Um, and on October 2nd, ESPN released its first NBA preseason power ranking. So they polled 40 reporters, insiders, and editors. Let me say that again. 40 reporters, insiders, and editors voted on their rankings. And do you know what they came up with? The Clippers at one, the Bucks at two, 76ers at three, Lakers at four, and the Rockets at five. Now look, I have no problem with the Bucks or Clippers being ranked in the top three, um, but no top three should exclude the Lakers, even in the preseason. I mean, the, the Lakers, the Bucks, and Clippers, you know, they should be ranked over teams like the 76ers and the Rockets, but somehow ESPN dropped the Lakers down to four. And in no world is Ben Simmons and Embiid, is a Ben Simmons and Embiid led team better than a team with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. That just simply isn't true. And I think from that point, ESPN really kind of set the tone for how other uh, sports outlets perceive the Lakers because on that same day, USA Today dropped a near identical top five. I mean, same order and everything except for they bumped out the Rockets and put the Jazz in at number five. No originality, just swapping out the fifth seed, everything else was the same. But then on October 11th, Sports Illustrated chimed in and they released their power rankings. So Clippers at one, Bucks at two, Rockets at three, 76ers at four, and the Lakers at five. Already you see the foolishness taking place with the Rockets and 76ers ranked above the Lakers. Nah. I don't think so. Then on October 22nd, the New York Post, they released their rankings. The trend continues with the Bucks and Clippers in the top spots. No problem with that. But then you've got the Bucks at one, Clippers at two, Nuggets at three, 76ers at four, and the Lakers at five. That same day, Yahoo Sports, they released their rankings. And these are just, these are pretty ridiculous. Bucks at one, Nuggets at two, 76ers at three, the Jazz at four, the Rockets at five, Lakers at six, and the Clippers at seven. Aside from the Bucks, Yahoo wants me to believe that there are four teams better than the Lakers and Clippers. I mean, I'm not a Clipper fan, clearly, but even they got disrespected in this one. I mean, this is just ridiculous. And What's funny about that particular uh, ranking is that even though the Clippers were, were ranked at seven, the writer acknowledges that he believes, he or she believes, the Clippers are going to win the championship. So if you believe they're going to win the championship, how do you have them ranked at number seven? But again, the Lakers shouldn't be ranked outside the top five. Frankly, they should never be ranked outside the top three. And then finally, Bleacher Report. Known for using Kobe and the Lakers for clickbait all the time on social media, on October 27th, they ranked the Clippers at one, Bucks at two, 76ers at three, Nuggets at four, 
Lakers at five. I mean, with Bleacher Report, it's no surprise that the Lakers were ranked, you know, last in the top five. That's just kind of par for the course with them. So if you're keeping track, ESPN, USA Today, Sports Illustrated, the New York Post, and Bleacher Report never ranked the Lakers first in any of their rankings. And not only that, the Lakers never cracked the top three. And they were ranked five or worse in four of the five of these rankings. That's just ridiculous. I mean, that's pretty remarkable to have the Lakers ranked that low behind teams like the Rockets, the 76ers, Nuggets, when they have two top five players and maybe the best player still in the NBA. So I, I did some digging, looked around, and only CBS Sports on October 15th ranked the Lakers number one. They had the Lakers at one, Clippers at two, 76ers at three, Bucks at four, and Nuggets at five. Now, the Bucks shouldn't be ranked number four. That that's a bit ridiculous. Um, but even when you when you take into account the CBS rankings, it just feels like a lot of these outlets were in love with the 76ers because they were consistently ranked in the top three when the Lakers were consistently left out of the NBA top three. So many outlets were wrong, and really their biases really prevailed over real reporting. I mean, take this clip from Jalen Rose, who picked the Rockets at one in the West and the Lakers at five. And number one, who's going to value the regular season more than the Houston Rockets? They have two guys that have won MVP the last three seasons. James Harden doesn't miss chunks of games. And you know what I love about Russell Westbrook? He plays hard every game. Yes. Okay, so both of those guys may play 82 games. And they still have the same roster key. Tucker, Capella, I like what the Houston Rockets are going to be for the regular season. So that's Jalen's list very quickly. Jalen, no more to NBA than me. But this at five and that at one in the regular season? I mean, I get it. I get the seeding. I get the regular season. But this thing is going to blow. I can't wait. That thing is going to really? blow completely Not up. As of July 8th, do you know who the top five teams in the NBA are? You probably do. The Bucks, Lakers, Clippers, Raptors, Celtics. No one had the Raptors and Celtics being contenders, and the Lakers were consistently mocked and disrespected. It's okay to have an opinion that differs from mine. I'm a Lakers fan, but I'm also realistic. I thought then, as I do now, the Lakers will win the NBA championship. But if you rank the Bucks or Clippers ahead of them, that's okay, as long as you had the Lakers ranked right behind them. Ranking the Lakers at three isn't disrespectful, but ranking them at four, five, six, seven, that's ridiculous. I mean, when you when you look at, you know, who fans are looking to, to kind of help shape their opinions, it's all these major outlets. And when the Lakers have, you know, we, we played half a season or, or more and the Lakers have beaten the Bucks and Clippers in back-to-back -back games, now, that didn't take place when these rankings took place. But to say that the Lakers didn't have enough to win to beat these teams, that, that's ridiculous. Telling us, telling fans that the 76ers, Rockets, Nuggets, and in some instances, the Utah Jazz are better than the Lakers, that's just being dishonest to the game. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I did not make it to mock or throw shade at any of these outlets, even though that's clearly what I did. I did it to show fans that major outlets get stuff wrong too, and they have biases just like fans do. There are a lot of great folks out there providing NBA coverage that don't have a blue check or don't work for a major outlet. Here are a few I trust and actually pay attention to. They really watch the game, and I have enjoyed and learned a lot myself from talking to some of these folks. So I'd recommend you follow. Follow these guys on Twitter. Benay Kilawala at B. Killam. Cody Hodak at Cody Hodak. Brian Cullen at Brian S. Cullen and Phil Sizemore at PH Sizemore. There are more. There's a number of other folks out there that I consistently follow and I retweet their stuff and read their articles. Follow me at Laker Central 365 or at Laker Central CEO. That's where you'll find me retweeting all these folks work and others. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Go on over to LakerCentral.com and subscribe to the newsletter at the bottom of the page. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. 